Colombia is the second most populous country in South America and they were there in force tonight to see their team have a convincing win over Poland by three goals to nil and there you can see the situation now in Group H. So it's Japan and Senegal who played earlier on on four points. Colombia now on three with their victory over Poland. Poland unfortunately are out of the 2018 World Cup. They have just one more match to come but unfortunately it will be of no significance to them whatsoever. It will be of significance though as you can see to Japan who have a very good chance now to advance Senegal, Colombia. What a match that is going to be. Will it be Africa or will it be South America that will be celebrating and advancing? So that group still wide open as far as the three teams still in, con in contention are concerned. Well, the Colombian fans, as I said, there are tens of thousands of them in Russia for this World Cup and they've had a very good evening indeed. And there's no doubt about it, uh, Diddy, thoroughly deserved victory, hugely disappointing for Poland. And uh, I'm sure from a Polish point of view, they'll have to completely rethink this and possibly time for some of those players to depart the scene and look to a younger generation possibly. They do, they uh, got 11 players over the age of 30 in their 23-man squad so I think they need to rejig and uh, probably bring some players through. Some of these players won't be there in the next uh, uh, European Championships if they do qualify. Uh, Colombia, they've been fantastic. The first 50 minutes Poland started well. It was very scrappy at the start, a lot of uh, foul play, a lot of niggly fouls. Once the game settled down and once they um, expressed themselves and once they started passing the ball, it was absolutely fantastic to watch. We highlighted Rodriguez before. Uh, he had a hand in, uh, in the first two goals. Absolutely fantastic. Cuadrado, uh, a threat all night, scoring the third goal with a sprint over 60, 70 yards and then have the composure to finish it. Um, I really like the team. Falcao, you see me in picture, Kevin mentioned half time, he looked like he lost half a yard, but the way he's put himself about, the way he holds the balls up, flicks them on, um, gets free kicks for his team, uh, an all round team performance. Uh, very good team, and uh, yeah, it'll be a great game against Senegal now, but I've got to say, I fancy these boys to beat them. And we just saw a number of shots there of Robert Lewandowski, his World Cup uh, aspirations well and truly over tonight and you know we expect Stephanie at this level of competition the big players the superstars of the game to step up and take responsibility particularly when they pull on their country's jersey and it just wasn't happening for Lewandowski tonight no more than it was happening for his team no it's been a bad tournament for him hasn't it really I yeah. think even just speaking about Falcao he, he, he might not have that little bit of pace but he's still working really hard in other aspects of his game to help the team and I think Levin Gelsdowski tonight didn't do that he, at times. He just obviously didn't have a lot of players around him at times as well. But I just think his overall performance in this tournament has been quite poor for a player of his standards, which is it's not nice to see. But as I say, I think it, it is a time for the Polish team maybe to get some more younger players in. And, and will he be there now? I don't know. But he's, he's, he's had a bad, a bad tournament, it's hard to say. Yeah, the major <laughs> championships haven't been kind to Robert Lewandowski and uh, Poland are out of the World Cup, as I said, with one group match to play. And uh, Valderrama there among the uh, Colombian supporters really enjoying that one. OK, we've uh, a lot to look back on from that uh, second half. First of all, we're going to take a look at uh, the Falcao goal. And uh, Kevin, you're a great admirer of his. Didn't have the greatest time in England. But, uh, and he missed the 2014 World Cup as well, so this is great for him, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I was really impressed with him tonight. The difference in body language between himself and Lewandowski. Um, you know, he, he inspired his team tonight. He chased everything, he ran after everything. The goal here, Cuadrado as well initially, goes out wide, comes into Quintero. The ball from Quintero is you know, absolutely inch perfect. The first touch from Falcao is what makes it, because he doesn't have to do anything else after his first touch. His run, obviously, is very good. He keeps himself on side. Um, but this first touch means he can concentrate on finishing it. And when you see it in the next um, clip clump, when he takes that touch, he quick look, he doesn't look up after now, head down, head down, outside of the foot, confident, a sign of confidence when he doesn't look up, he knows what he's going to do, yeah. doesn't wait to see what the keeper's doing, just re you know, he knows outside of the foot, put this in the bottom corner, and confident finish for a guy who hasn't been, I suppose, on top form in the last year or two. He's been questioned when he went to Chelsea, to Man United, back to Monaco. Um, but, you know, he seems to show great passion playing for Colombia. Steve Koppel said to me before, the key to football, getting your good players to work hard. And I think tonight they got their front four 
Quadro, uh, Quadrado, Quintero, Rodriguez and Falcao. That was the difference. They worked hard. Not only they're good players, but they were tracking back. They were fighting for every ball. They treated it. Falcao said he wanted to be a cup final. They treated it like a cup final. Yeah, and interesting, you know, the striker's uh, mentality when he gets in a position like that. And Kevin, you were a striker, you know, in the Premier League. I mean, a lot of other players, even though they'd be experienced, when they get in that position, they freeze. But uh, strikers have great confidence, and Falcao showed that tonight, didn't he? Yeah, you remember Clinton last night. Clinton yes. Morrison said, yeah. "Go cold." Go cold. And you can is... see that with Falcao there. He, you know, he just great first touch. Next thing in his mind is just make clean contact with the ball. Don't look up. Look at the ball. Make sure you get good contact. Confident enough to go to the outside of his right foot, his better foot. Go to the outside and curl it into the corner. And it was never any doubt. You know, you've seen it in real time. It was never any doubt he was going to score. You yeah, know, he yeah. didn't stutter. He just looked. His stride was perfect. Everything about that was just a clean, composed finish. Yeah, because it is very, very difficult for most players who get one on one with the keeper. More often than not, the keeper can come out on top, but not with good strikers. Why do you think, Kevin, that he didn't do well in the Premier League? I don't know, because you know, you see that game tonight. He's he was strong. He was he's good in the air. He he runs the channels. He holds the ball up. It's it's hard to know why Man United was difficult for him. Chelsea was difficult for him. Yeah. You know, he had a bad injury. Um, at Monaco, and that seemed to take. We spoke about half time that little half yard, and in the Premier League, is so quick. Maybe maybe that little half yard just held them back. But and this is the World Cup, and. You know, he, he didn't look off the pace tonight at all. He looked fit. His face, you could see in his face, he was, he was gaunt. He, was, he looks like he's really prepared well for, for this competition. Yeah, and I suppose, Stephanie, uh, having missed 2014, obviously he has great desire because this quite possibly is his last World Cup. Uh, so he did show great desire tonight, didn't he? Yeah, I think he's always been a player that done that. Even at Man United at the time, he wasn't going well for him. He always tried his best, and you could see he was really yeah. disappointed in himself that it wasn't going well. But I think he's a player that, even when it didn't go well at Man United, Chelsea wanted him, you know. So it's there's something in him, and people can see that, and he proves it every time he plays for Colombia, and obviously with Monaco now as well, he's doing it again. So he's he's a very very good player, and I think I'm, I'm happy to see him do well in this tournament. I have to say. Yeah, the fans <laughs> liked him, uh, did he, in England, but it, it just didn't happen for him. But but he's still a, a striker of great. Quality, isn't he? Yeah, and no, I think he's the he's the face of the Colombian team, and he's been for a number of years. As you say, this we saw his celebration. It probably meant so much to him because he missed the last World Cup um, when he came to England. When he come in the in the latter stages of your career, I think he was 29, 30 when he came to England after a bad injury. Sometimes it's not easy to adapt, even though he played in other leagues, he played in yeah. European competition. The Premier League is a different different ball game, and um, I think he just found it hard. He probably wasn't 100%, and it's hard enough when you're 100%, and then he came, the physicality of the game, it's a, it's a, it's a different game, And uh, but take nothing away. This is a guy who has been one of the standout uh, goal scorers and centre forwards in the last decade. There's not an awful lot about, and I think he could be a huge asset uh, if they stay in the tournament because this guy yeah. will work hard. He's the he's the leader of the team, and he couldn't have two more opposite or different leaders of the team today. One is really thriving, taking that responsibility on. The other one sulks, loses balls. You know, he's, he's bothered about everything else by his own performance, and I think there was. The huge difference in the two teams tonight. Yeah, hunger makes a huge difference. There's no doubt about that. And another player who uh, did really well during the game, Steffi, but in, in, in terms of the Premier League, also struggled. Uh, Quadrado, good game tonight, and then he capped it with a super goal. Yeah, he was excellent, and I have to say, and he was pretty unfortunate against Japan to come off. But I think he's to, to get to where he's coming from. He's come from his own half with that ball. He's carried it well. I think his first touch, at first I thought maybe he's given um, Paznan a chance to get it, but it's. It's brilliant composure by me. He, he travels with the ball well. He gets it out of his feet and he doesn't panic. It's a very, very good, good finish. And as I said, I think he was very unfortunate to get taken off and probably a tactical substitution against Japan. But he's definitely saved himself for tonight because he's been fantastic and he's been really on, on form in the game alongside Falcao. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. That's okay, <laughs> Stephanie. Listen, no, you're fine. You're fine. Listen, uh, Kevin, sometimes players like Quadrado can be a little bit frustrating because sometimes they overindulge a little bit. But I mean, he did contribute to that victory tonight, didn't he? Yeah, massively. He was involved in everything. Um, and you know, don't want to overlook on Rodriguez in that goal. Rodriguez oh, no. won the ball in the That's corner flag, not. dribbled up the line and yeah, played yeah. that ball from the halfway line. A great ball. So, you know, that, that foursome, we said at halftime, Quadrado, Quintero, Rodriguez and Falco, all of them stood up tonight and, and showed, you know, matched a sort of a Belgium, you know, four, three or four players. He stood yes, up and showed yeah. what he could do. Um, I don't know if they have enough behind them to to, to go far in the tournament, but if, if those four play, play well, they, you know, 
you'd think nearly that's enough. Yeah, credit where it's due, because I was keeping the best to last, and to have a conversation about James Rodriguez, he's already proven himself <laughs> at the World Cup, and it, you know, having missed the first game, okay, he came on with 20 minutes to go, but now he's fit and raring to go, and uh, he looked good, didn't he, did he? and he contributed a lot to Colombia's effort. Yeah, I think it gives... Uh when you've got these players on the pitch, it gives everybody else so much more confidence because you know if you're in trouble, if you don't know where to play, you always go one option because he will always show for the ball and you can give him the ball if he's sandwiched in two, three players, he will always come out with the ball and the, the third goal just epitomised what well, this guy is all about. He wins the ball, then he's, he hasn't got the pace to run down the line and he, he knows that full well, but then uh, the Polish players guess that he has to come back on his, on his, uh, towards his own goal, but he keeps going and then he's got the vision and the composure to see the, the run of Cuadrado, who's 40, 50 yards away from him. He sees the, 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 uh, the space behind the Polish backline and he plays the perfect ball in there. And, um, yeah, he, he couldn't have done any more. As I said, I was usually impressed. I, I wasn't too sure because buying the players on the back of a good World Cup, I think is always a bit of a danger because yeah. playing for the country, we know sometimes it means more to... South American players, maybe to other countries. Mm -hmm. um, but what he's done for Bayern Munich this season has been absolutely outstanding. And uh, there were a lot of question marks in Munich whether he's got the, the attitude to, to uh, really play uh, and be a success in Germany. Uh, but uh, he answered them questions. And to come out after injury to play 90 minutes today, because after 60, 65 minutes, I thought he might be coming off because he looked a bit jaded and tired. But he, he kept on, uh, took the armband towards the end, which he richly deserved. Um, yeah, fantastic performance. As I said, this is a great team to watch. You know, the, I like the tenacity at the back. And going forward, uh, they've been a try to watch tonight. Uh, on the other side of the coin, unfortunately, we have uh, what was a, a poor Polish performance. And I know there are uh, lots of Polish fans looking at our programme tonight. And they'll be hugely disappointed with their team essentially going out of the competition. There was a small, small glimmer of hope when they started to play a little bit of football midway through that second half. And they got a couple of small things out of it. Possibly a half chance fall into Lewandowski here. Yeah, he's done ever so well. This is the only real a chance he's, he's been able to create for himself. Takes the ball down well. Uh, I wouldn't blame him for, for missing the chance because Ospina did well to yeah. narrow the angle. Uh, and then it's probably the best chance here. Krikowiak, again, Ospina does well. Um, but this was all they had to... Um, there to show for really and uh, yeah over the 90 minutes it was just not enough I think in terms of physicality and, and uh, aggression they couldn't live with Colombia uh, and then I think Colombia showed in the after 20 minutes of the first half for, for the rest of the 70 minutes they're just better footballers the way yeah. they pass the ball in, in Poland um, very one-dimensional and if you have your star player not performing um, and not really giving you the intention or the idea that he's really he really badly wants this it drags everybody else down mm -hmm. because this is the guy if they wanted to progress they needed him to do well in this tournament he didn't do well uh, i wouldn't call him a one-man team but he's certainly a, a huge huge part of the poland team and he just didn't do it yeah he scored 16 of the 28 goals in qualifying which tells you about the contribution he made in qualifying but just hasn't happened for him at the finals let's just revisit the goal that set them on their way in the first half kevin and again Again, uh, James involved in the build-up. Yeah, it was. It was, um, you know, this is the one. It, we spoke about uh, earlier on, um, Japan and uh, Senegal. Why don't they just hang a ball up? You know, they're so much taller. And here, this is what Colombia do. It was uh, Quintero, I think, who chipped it up. Or James, who chipped it up. Yeah. And Mina, you know, he's six foot five, I think. You know, it's no contest for him there. Keeper doesn't do himself any favours, but it's a simple finish. And um, it was a good move. It was a short corner, it was a quick one. Poland were caught on the hop. But, um, you know, when you put the ball up in the air like that for a guy who's six foot five, it's, it's very difficult to defend. We, yeah. talk, we talked about, the, I think in the first game, you talked about uh, mistakes, that you can't afford to make mistakes if you go into the next stage when you play against the better teams. It's a short corner, it's nothing new. But the Polish just get attracted to the ball, all of them. There's two players, two Colombian players on the, by the corner flag. One is Cuadrado, one is James, uh, who, who took that short corner. And they just didn't, didn't notice them. They didn't want to mark them. Um, and this is just a basic mistake because yeah. you've got to stay with your people unless the, the, the ball is cleared. And uh, it, was, it was far too easy, but uh, well executed at the same time. Yeah, very well executed by Colombia. They win 3-0. And now they've set themselves up very nicely indeed for that final group game.